Hello there, welcome to Speaking of Business. I'm your host, Nancy Boyle. And today we're going to be talking about websites and mobile devices and how well do they interact. Joining me are Bridget Van Lanningham with Business Solutions Unlimited and Joe Lemire with Elick Innovation. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having us. Um, Bridget, I'm going to start with you ladies first. Okay. So tell us a little bit about what you do, Business Solutions Unlimited, etc. Um, I founded Business Solutions Unlimited in 2005 with the idea to bring small businesses and nonprofits in the area the resources that they need, the experts that they need on the team that they might not otherwise have, uh, you know, be able to fund. Mm -hmm. So we have a full tax and accounting division, a full human resource division, and a full marketing division. And uh, in our full marketing division, we do everything cradle to grave, videos, blogging, content, plans, uh, graphics, websites. Okay. All right. Joe? I'm the chief innovator at Elick Innovation, and uh, we design and build web applications, websites. Uh, we help businesses uh, develop their internet strategy and then implement their internet strategy to use the internet to grow their business. Okay, great. Well, let's talk websites, mm -hmm. okay? And we're going to talk about the mobility factor of websites. But first of all, um, okay, and Joe knows this of me, I am not the most technological <laughs> genius. Um, but if you build a website, you shouldn't it show up on somebody's phone or somebody's tablet just as well as it shows up when I'm on my desktop computer? And I'll throw that one. I'll start with you, Joe. Well, your website, is, as long as the device that's trying to access your website is internet connected, your website will show up on it. Um, but for it to be truly mobile friendly, which I think is the mm -hmm. direction you want to take this, is it um, has to be designed to be mobile friendly. So the usability for the person trying to access your website is a good experience as opposed to one where they have to do a lot of stretching of fingers and manipulating and moving around the screen. So ultimately, yes, you can access it, but for a site to be truly mobile friendly, it has to be prepared for that. Okay. You know, I think, Nancy, this is a good time to go into, there's some terminology, and that's always important, whether mm -hmm. you're talking with a vendor or someone in the industry, just to make sure you don't cross-reference things. And there is something called mobile-friendly, and there's responsive design. And I think that we should be clear today to um, kind of talk through those two things, because they are very different. So you can be mobile-friendly and not responsive. And really what you want to go for today uh, is m responsive design. So that means that if it's on the 100-inch TV, where people are starting to get their internet, um, or on a smartphone that it sort of morphs to that so you get all the the data and the functionality again marketing is really part of it these days is making it easy for the end user the consumer and so that's what we're really trying to do is make everything um, right in the hands of the consumer and so they can make fast easy decisions okay so um, mobile friendly I have my little cell phone and I'm going to a website you know checking out something and if it's just mobile friendly I'm going to have to size it from what you were saying, Joe, right? Uh, possibly. Actually, to further your point, because it is important to get that clarification, um, there's really two ways to approach the, the mobile experience. If I'm on, if I'm on a, a phone and I access a website and it's mobile friendly, what's actually happening is I'm being redirected to a smaller version of the website. Oh, okay. Then it becomes okay. mobile friendly. And there's usually limited content, limited usability, but still more functional than if I access the actual website. And, you, and you'll know you're on a mobile-friendly website because at the bottom it'll say continue on to the main website if, if you want that as an option. Okay. Um, whereas what you're saying is a responsive, whether you know, it'll respond to the size of the device that you're on, big screen TV or small phone, but it's the same website. It's not been redirected. And, okay. Um, the earlier one, the mobile friendly, is the older version of before responsive became popular. And, but going forward, responsive is the only way to approach um, a mobile experience. Well, that makes sense. I mean, mm -hmm. because I'm guessing there's a lot to go into redesigning a website to make it responsive. Yes, and we are getting that question a lot as, mm -hmm. you know, I have a website. Can you make it responsive? 
um, and, and there is a lot that goes into that. So, you know, we really need to look at the back end and, and how it was created. We did come across one that was newly created um, that we were able to uh, maneuver a little bit. But, of course, we prefer to start with Fresh so that we make sure all of the search engine and placement is there. You know, just like everything in technology, you know, Google and the search engines put out, you know, their specifications and what they're really looking for. So, you know, we try to build a website five years out, but, you know, it's between three and five. You really need to be looking at your website on an ongoing basis. So we're going to have to redesign our website every three to five years? Well, it's Potentially. Good, yeah, it's good, good <laughs> Potentially. to point out that. Yeah. We prefer that. I know that. That, 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 <laughs> that, that certainly needs to be part of it. But uh, to further your point on, on that is you can retrofit an existing site to be responsive, but if it's more than five years old, it's, you're, you're going to spend more time, possibly more money doing that. So you're much better off. Um, you know, starting over and, and developing a new strategy, new plan, the whole thing. Um, but it is possible, but that's a case-by-case -case basis, and it really depends on how it was built three to five years ago. Okay, well, so, and that makes sense. Yeah. You know, I mean, technology, gosh, it seems like you buy a new piece of equipment and mm -hmm. you don't even get it unpacked and it's outdated. <laughs> Something else has come along. So, Absolutely. So that's a challenge. And, and Bridget, you mentioned Google, and, and really what we're here to talk about is this whole Google mobile update thing that's been freaking everybody out. So you want to take that question, like what is that all about? Yeah, essentially um, Google about every 18 months makes a, makes a major change to their search algorithm. And, and they, they just want you to get the desired result of your search and they want the experience that you have to be a good one. So uh, effective April 21st of this year, um, Google decided that they're going to give preferential treatment and uh, better performance and results to sites that are mobile friendly. So they're strongly encouraging that a business take uh, those steps. And now that doesn't mean they're going to punish those that aren't. Okay? okay. But there's a difference because you know because Google's not into punishing you unless you're doing things trying to deceive it. They just they're going to but they will reward those that are more mo mobile friendly, and potentially. Uh, in a search result, whether you're on a mobile device or a PC, you may get a different search result, but it's still going to be more favorable than a site that's not mobile friendly um, or responsive. And, uh, and that, let me just add on to that point real quick, is that um, they're recognizing mobile friendly, older technology, and responsive right now kind of in the same boat, okay. but that's, that's short term. Uh, they really want everybody to be responsive, but realize if they make, if they make that change now, um, it's going to be it's expensive and, uh, to take that next step for some businesses. And, um, so for about probably the next year, uh, as long as it's mobile friendly and responsive, you're in good shape. But eventually you need to be responsive. Well, and that makes sense, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the challenge, of course, and I, I'm trying to come from the perspective of the person who, who really is not very technologically savvy. So the challenge then, I guess, comes for those of us that aren't that smart is how do we know what you are seeing when you go to our website. We might think that it's going to be mobile friendly, but in reality, how do you know well, if I'll it tell is you, or not? The, the first great thing, I pull up in front of any business, I pull up my smartphone and see how their web site pulls up. Mm -hmm. So you can certainly check that on your own. Um, as well as Google put out a tool, I think mm -hmm. you referenced, mm -hmm. um, you know, put out a tool that you can check. They're also starting to put a flag, a little banner. So it's when you, from your, like, let's say PC, you, you, you type in something, it'll have like a mobile friendly flag on it. Um, and then did you want to talk about the, the tool that Google put out to help yeah, with that? Yeah, it's just, um, very, essentially it's a web page. If you go to Google and mm -hmm. type in mobile friendly test, you'll come to a web page that allows you to put your web address into it. You press the button to submit it, and in just a, a few seconds, it's going to analyze your website and give you the results. If you're mobile friendly and responsive, it'll tell you. Um, if you're not, it'll tell you that you're not and what you need to do to fix it, and it gives you recommendations and tools. And essentially, those recommendations are you need to start planning for becoming responsive. Okay. And I guess the, the goal of this is if I'm doing a search and I'm on my phone or my tablet or some sort of mobile device, if I'm doing a search, then the mobile friendly or the mobile responsive sites are going to come up first higher up in the search. That's correct. Is that, mm -hmm. is that correct? I mean, that's why we're doing this. All of the right? things being equal, that would be the case, correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think the message to get across to people who own websites who, again, are not that technologically adept, um, is that if you want to get your name out there, you're going to have to do these upgrades 
and get your site to be more interactive. No doubt about it. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. But you know, Nancy, it's not, you know, we talked about like the three to five year sweet spot in mm -hmm. looking at your website because it's not just about the fact that now they're, they're you know, promoting um, responsive design, but there's just other things they put out like, you know, where's the address? You know, their, their al algorith algorithms mm -hmm. sometimes, um, you know, will look for certain things. And so they say, and now we want the address, you know, located up in the top where before we put it on the bottom. So there's other things that, um, um, the search engines look for when they're populating that list but you know I think one of the easiest way I've described this to we all are consumers and we mm -hmm. all have customers or clients uh -huh. of some level and you know I tell everybody that Google didn't just decide oh let's just see what we can do to, to mess with businesses <laughs> right. out there right? Right, right, right. you know they they have consumer base as well and so they're working on all of these technologies um, to improve and enhance their end user and their consumer um, so, and, and that should, if we play along and, and we keep up with the technology and we fill in um, the website correctly and, and do the things we're supposed to do, check those boxes, so to speak, mm -hmm. it should help us as the business as well because they're going to populate us um, and go out and find those things. So, if, for example, you know, if you as the consumer are searching for, you know, pizza, you don't want something in Chicago to come up. Right, right. right. So it's sort of, and, and that's, a, that's a really big net, but they, this is just part of them continuously honing that down so that they deliver the most relevant um, and information to you so well and I guess mo I, I, I didn't think about that but yes if I'm doing a search for pizza I'm getting you know local and I haven't put in my zip code so clearly they know where I am yeah there's no hiding <laughs> That's right. okay especially, even more so with smartphones yeah, right, right. <laughs> especially if you have your smartphone yeah. so kind of let's walk through the process Joe you mentioned a little bit ago that mobile friendly is like it's it's like another scaled down version of your mm -hmm. website. Right. So let's say I've got a website mm -hmm. and I'm listening to this show and listening to you guys and going, yikes, I better do something about it. And I may or may not have a mobile friendly website, but kind of, if you can, mm -hmm. you know, sort of walk us through that process of, oh gosh, I need to do something about it. Right. Now it's done. Okay. I mean, I know that's a pretty global <laughs> question, so. Let me uh, just start off and uh, please jump in yeah. uh, when necessary here. Um, we always tell clients is the first thing we want to look at is how much mobile traffic is your website getting now? Which to further your earlier point is that's why Google is encouraging the mobiles. They're watching all internet traffic and saying more and more people are using uh, their smartphones and tablets to access the internet. So that's why they're encouraging it. But if you have Google Analytics on your website, mm -hmm. they'll give you that information. It'll tell you exactly how many visitors you've had that access from a PC, a tablet, and a phone. Really? And we tell clients that if, if the number of mobile visitors is less than 20% or 20% or less, now you need to start planning because it's not going to change. It, it's going to con continue to increase. Sure. Um, this, the, uh, but people will keep using mobile. So now is the time to start planning so that by next year you've got a good plan in place. But if you're 50% or higher, 50% of your visitors or more are accessing your site now, you've got to take action now if you don't have any type of uh, mobile experience on your website because half the people come in your website are having a bad experience because they're using their uh, their phone mm -hmm. so there's some things you can do like if you don't have any mobile experience right now take that step to mobile friendly because that can be done quickly and okay. less expensively while you plan for responsive um, towards the end of the year or next year because by next year you really need to be responsive so starts with check the traffic you're getting now well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think something um, that I can kind of share that I'm seeing as pitfalls. Uh -huh. um, I am not particularly a fan of mobile-friendly sites. Um, we don't encourage them at all. Okay, so we're talking about the special little, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, and the reason why is because, you know, and, and we're business owners. Sometimes right. you have to do what you have to do. Clearly right. understand that. Yep. That may, um, you know, outweigh any other decision-making factor. But what we've seen is it, essentially it is a Band-Aid. And okay. so what are we doing with Band-Aids, right? At some point you're going to rip it off. Exactly. Right. It's just like, you know, to, to the point that you have to go to responsive anyway. So, but what we found was... Um, and I, I, we were talking earlier, and mm -hmm. you mentioned all of the people and the, the, the scare tactics that's come out since, you know, from the marketing mm -hmm. uh, industry, unfortunately, with this. But, you know, what we've found is that even before this, you know, Google really made this push, people, there was some marketers out there, or web people, pushing this mobile-friendly 
um, sites. And we found that it just led to more consumer confusion and issues, uh, operational issues for the businesses. You know, for example, we had a restaurant who had been sold this uh, type of package. And so, you know, you're busy, there's lots of things going on, it's high season, it's wedding season, all of these different things, mm -hmm. and you're trying to operate your business and you go in and you make a change to the website and oh, you forgot you have a mobile site, mm -hmm. which is oh. not connected to your main site. So it's not like you go one place and make a change oh, okay. and that and filters it, across okay. the board. So then all of a sudden you have a situation where you have a consumer on the phone saying, you know, asking you a question about something and, you, and, and you're in this confrontation because they say, well, it says it's $9.99 on the, on the website. And you're going, no, I'm on the website. It doesn't say that. And so there you start to have this whole confusion with the consumer, which we know is not good for business, not what we're trying to do. We want to be you know, concise and clear in our messaging. Yeah, and those are very good points because if you don't pay attention to both um, experiences, then you are going to have those problems. Um, a situation, though, where mobile-friendly does make sense um, is when you're actually starting with mobile-friendly. That's going to be the primary user experience. Uh, for instance, if your website uh, uh, generates data in a database mm -hmm. and, and all users want to access that data, well, having a mobile-friendly interface is going to be just fine because the data is actually changing behind the scenes okay. and, and that's going to keep that, that experience fresh. So in that case like that, it would make sense to take that preliminary step, um, but you still have to pay attention and at the end of the day, it really does need to be responsive this time next year. Well, and I think that's a good point. So if you're going to do this, it seems to me that it makes sense that you really sit down with whoever is doing your web design mm -hmm. and say okay how do we make this responsive that's right you know what it, what is our strategy now you're mentioning a year mm -hmm. um and, and i know in our own website you know it's not something you go hey joe can you fix this mm -hmm. and and the whole thing has changed it doesn't happen overnight so what's an average or maybe even a a, a scale of timeline to build out a responsive to website? To build out a responsive website, yeah. We usually say two weeks, which includes an interviewing process. Okay. To, you know, make sure we're getting fresh content and messaging. Okay, and even to do whatever programming has to be done mm -hmm. behind that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, because that to me seems pretty short. Yeah. I think it depends on the size of the website because a lot of the projects that we work on, um, 12 weeks is stretching it. And, and it's usually it's size and complexity. Um, uh, in inter interfacing with other software that has nothing to do with the responsiveness and the mobile friendliness. And uh, so you have to, it's, I would say it depends. Um, two weeks is, uh, in, our, in our world, is very aggressive. Um, but I think it's very doable if you've got all the content in advance of that two weeks. Because to me, you say the interview process, um, I find our clients uh, 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 generally um, uh, the content is the hardest part for us to get past and uh, once we have the content it does go quicker uh, for us but uh, that's something that uh, a challenge that we face on a regular basis. So, so if the content is already there. Assuming that's already it, there. Assuming yeah. you know you're going to use the same content yeah. you're just just yeah. making it responsive mm -hmm. that's a lot different than if you're redesigning the whole thing. And that is correct. Yeah. Okay yeah. and you were going to say I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, I, I'm not sure now what I was going to say, so that's okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, so I, I guess... Oh, I, you know what? I, I, you were right. So mm -hmm. I was going to say, just to pick up on your point, is sometimes, too, you know, building the website is not what's hard, you know? I mean, well... I don't really think any of it's hard if you know what you're doing, I guess. But, you know, it's sometimes just connecting those databases and, mm -hmm. you know, the widgets and all the other thing, apps and all the other things you need to, to go into that. But, but you're right, the content sometimes, um, you know, and it's definitely different for a startup business versus someone who's been uh, in business. You know, yeah, you get somebody difference. who's been in business for 30 years. Right. There's enough content to start with, at mm -hmm. least, you know, that we can sort of take that content, try to freshen it, and at least launch the website, even if we need to still kind of improve, um, you know, on the language that's there. Well, and then if you're purchasing, if you're selling your stuff online, you know, that's got to impact it, right? Isn't sure, that a lot absolutely. more complicated? An e-commerce site, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you. Yes. E-commerce. So many differences between, you know, a static website that just has good content and is engaging to something that's actually interactive. So just totally different ballpark. Okay. Yeah. Now, we've heard the term mobile getting. <laughs> you want to talk about mobile getting to just sort of dispel any fears that our audience might have at this point. You use the word scare tactics. That's yeah. kind of, that's kind of what that uh, you know. 
and media was the other thing that came to mind. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, like we said, I mean, I think that unfortunately there are a sec of our population that is um, seizes opportunities like this. Mm -hmm. But I think you know the ultimate thing, and one of the reasons you know working with the SBDC and the SBRN is to find vendors who have been in the community for a long time and have been vetted by mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be that guinea pig right. um, to to work through that. But. I, I really think it, it really came from the media and, and the fact that anytime the, the general public is, is a little less informed on something, it's very easy to scare them and into you know, the unknown. Of course, mm -hmm. we're scared of what we don't know. But it's really, um, I, you know, as soon as I heard that terminology, I don't know about you, but I thought it was hysterical because mm -hmm. it's really not. I right. mean, yeah. nobody's really coming out with this scare right. stuff except for the media. Right. And, and no need to panic, I guess, is really the, right. the whole thing. Okay. Just, right. just take a close look at what, what your situation is now, plan for your next steps and then make sure that your next steps fit into your overall strategic plan, you're gonna be in good shape. But don't ignore it, for sure. Um, but don't, you know, don't You know, panic. Nancy, I think it's like any other operational issue we face, mm -hmm. right, in the business. You know, you can't, um, you can't slight it uh, because it is gonna make a competitive difference. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it doesn't mean that you're falling off the face of the earth and no one's ever gonna be able to Correct. find you again. I mean, Google didn't send out the, you know, the ultimatum of, of you know, by the 21st, you know, cooperate or you will, that's you're, it, you're out of the World Wide Web. Yeah. Um, you know, but I think one of the things we wanted to do is just try to educate people that you're going to need to stick, stay with the technology so that we can get out of it what we what we're trying to get which is the growth to the business that's correct yeah. okay now you were talking uh, earlier about the Google Analytics and saying mm -hmm. how many of your customers are actually using mobile devices mm -hmm. so if if in fact most of your customers are going to your website via their desktop PC is the time frame I, I, I guess is it I'm okay now but I really need to be planning for this within the next year or do I have a couple of years or is it, it are we just gonna watch that needle and see how it moves well it, I think it's important that if, if you see 50 percent or more like I said earlier uh, traffic you really st need to start taking action now meaning it, you move it into your priority list mm -hmm. you know it's the front burner now instead of um, maybe the back or the middle um, and, and if it's in that 20 percent range you I would take my time you know it would be less of a priority uh, but you still start to, you start talking about it now. Okay. Um, but if if your business model and, and your cash flow and, and your just your time allows you to execute something before the end of the year, you're going to be in better shape. Because then, in theory, you won't have to think about it. Um, what Google's going to do next for the next few years, and and it's off your plate. So that's okay. that's how I feel about that. Now, where do some of the other search engine optimization tools come in? I mean. You know, and again, that's one of those from the non-techie person. Do um, you factor those things in? I mean, Absolutely. you know, theoretically, this whole mobile thing, if I'm going to get a responsive website, that's going to theoretically put help me you. higher it's up. Help you. Are there other things that I can do to get me higher up than that, I guess is really well, the question. Well, absolutely. I mean, from starting with, you know, we get pushed, um, you know, information from Google and, and mm -hmm. the search engines all the time. You know, and just like I had alluded or, or had said earlier was that, you know, we used to put the address and the contact information on the bottom. Now we're, mm -hmm. you're starting to see that's going to be more up top. And that's really a search engine request. That's okay. really where they're, they're looking for that information. So if, you know, if they sort of give you the checklist, these are the five things you need to do. The all, if you can click all those five off, then you're going to be better off than if you can only hit one or two of those, right? right? Because really at that point, your website is in competition with all the other websites in, you know, with that metadata. So whatever the consumer is typing in to find, to populate, you know, you're on the web, the World Wide Web with all of those others. So how do you get found in all that noise? Yeah, I think the, um, the, the foundation, if you have a well-built website that's three to five years old and maybe you're responsive, maybe you're not, I think the foundation of all of what, what Google's looking for is the content needs to be appropriate. Uh, search engine friendly it needs to be written in a way that people search. Uh, okay. It has to be well written. It, it can't. It has to be written for the reader first, but then ultimately massage for the way people search. Um, it can't have uh, overloaded with keywords that trying to trick Google. Google to c catches on to that quickly. And, and, and if you just focused, if you took, if you did one thing mm -hmm. between now and the end of the year, is make sure your content is outstanding as far as search engine uh, friendly and uh, well written and is refreshed on a regular basis, whether through it's a blog or uh, you're adding pages, keep your content fresh. Um, to us, it's the foundation of your entire search strategy. 
So. Okay. And, you know, and I'm glad you mentioned, mentioned blog because, you know, these days we don't have a conversation about websites, so we don't talk about blogging. Mm -hmm. um, and we did a case study that I wouldn't mind to share with you. It's, uh, we basically used ourselves so that we could, be, we could control uh -huh. the environment and know exactly what went on. So we had a static web page, and we monitored it for a year period, 12-month period. And then we created a blog. We blogged once a week um, for six months, and then we monitored the traffic. And you, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, it was just such a neat experience to go through, but all of a sudden the phone's ringing from Miami, Tampa, really? you know, Orlando, some of the markets that you might not otherwise think is worth your resources because they're big and they've got lots of, of other businesses there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's the beauty of getting this World Wide Web to work like we want it to and we need it to is that, you know, now we're blogging and, you know, Google is, um, is not really looking for advertisers while that, that pays the bills and they'll mm -hmm. certainly gladly take your money. They're really, truly looking for experts in the industries now so that they can then, again, populate and deliver that um, timely, relevant information to their consumer. So, you know, blogging gives you an opportunity to do that, to show your expertise in whatever area that you that you have. And so then also that's just putting out good fresh content mm -hmm. that's relevant, it's on a topic, you know, so for example, our HR division had written a blog about updating your handbook and the phone rings within two days from a, a company in Tampa hmm. who had found, you know, was Googling somebody to help them with their their thing and our blog populated they read it and thought hey these people know what they're talking about let's give them a call and and see if we can work together so I think that's just one example of ultimately what we're trying to do mm -hmm. is get the phones to ring right. and you know right. those kind of things and um, I think that it's just really interesting when you look at a case study like that and you really can start to understand how it all works behind the scenes and how it can sort of magically mm -hmm. appear uh, for you with a consumer and, and to tie that into our conversations about mobile is if your website is responsive, that blog will be easy to consume on your phone. Okay. Um, easy to read, easy to organize, easy to manage, um, so that they have a good user experience and can. And then they just press on the phone number that's properly placed, and the phone rings, and uh, it makes the connection for the business. So it does tie into that, um, you know, the, in terms of the user experience, because Google wants to connect us with people that are looking for us, but they have to have a good user experience when they get there. Okay. And I'm assuming, you know, we're talking Google, as mm -hmm. if Google were the only search engine in the world. Yeah. Um, there are other search engines, but I'm assuming Google being the big guy that they are, yeah. the others are kind of following in place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they all react differently. Um, I only pay attention to Google, though. I'll tell you okay. that right now. And, and, and it's not because we don't, uh, you know, the Bings and the Yahoos of the world, they, they have their place, and some people have them as their favorites. That's how they like to search. But ultimately, the world is using Google to search. And that's that's all we've got time for. So you know, right. that's where we need to focus our efforts and our. Well, and I, I definitely think they're the lead, the industry leader. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, they um, are really pushing the the bar constantly. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, the last uh, uh, class we had with Google, um, you know, they talked about how they're you know making the travel. They're going into the travel industry yeah. and how oh they're my. how <laughs> you know now they have a you can you know hit the button that says uh, flights and. You know, and then, you know, you've got Google Wallet and everything can be right there online and, you know, manage your whole world right there online, mm -hmm. you know. So it's just really interesting. But so they're, they're really leading the pack. They, they have been for a long time. You know, they are the number one uh, search engine in the world. And, um, you know, I think they're, um, innov they're very innovative, I think. Yes, yeah. And, and I think that's probably what attracts us to them. Right, right, right. I mean, they come up with the new ideas and they scrap ideas all the time, too. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're the first to try stuff and abandon it if it's not having an impact. So when it has an impact and they make major changes as a result of that, you got to pay attention. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now we're almost out of time, but mm -hmm. I want to give you each an opportunity to just give one quick tip to the viewing audience about what they need to know with regard to this topic. Um, I'll just say good content and be responsive by next year. Those are the two things that are most important. You know, and certainly uh, responsive is where you need to be. The other thing that I'm seeing a lot of people uh, fall into the trap of is making sure that you own your website and don't give it to a large mm. machine and then you've invested all these years into it to realize you don't really own the property or yes. the content. And that's Good something point. that's very, you know, devastating to us, to a business. Yep. So I would say make sure you understand that you have proprietary, uh, you know, ownership of that, to be responsive and to, you know, even if you have a marketing uh 
person or per people, it's always good to reach out to marketing agencies and see if they would be willing to contract with you on an informational basis so that they can keep those people up to date because it is very hard, as, as we mm -hmm. can attest to, to mm -hmm. keep up with. It's, a, it's technology at the end of the day, so it's ever-changing and evolving. Okay, great. Thank you both for being here. Thanks for having Thank us. you in the audience for joining us today. And remember, a responsive website is your key to success. So thanks for joining us. Bye-bye now. You're watching Public Access on Xfinity 99, exclusive programming for Jacksonville Xfinity subscribers. Bye now.